Hey, it's Metacosis Perfectionals, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today, we'll continue our bleeding and coagulation playlist. We have a comparison among three diseases. Typical hemolytic uremic syndrome, atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome, and thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. So, let's get started. But before we get started, look at the hemolytic uremic syndrome. First, you have a triad of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and acute renal failure. Plus, there is the E. coli 0157H7, which will lead to bloody diarrhea, blood in the stool. Next, atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome and thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura are very similar. Both of them have a pentad five symptoms, not just three. Okay, what are the five symptoms? You have microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, acute renal failure, fever, and neurological symptoms. However, the difference between atypical HES and TTP is that renal failure is way, way, way more common in atypical HES than in TTP. However, neurological symptoms, usually altered mental status, is more common in thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. It's almost non-existent in atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome. And that's why atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome gets a big kidney, but a very tiny brain. However, TTP gets a tiny kidney and a big brain. As you know, we divide hemolytic uremic syndrome into atypical and typical. Atypical happens in adult. It's also diarrhea negative. It's also known as primary HES. Typical is HES happens in childhood, and this is diarrhea positive, and this is also the secondary HES. It's secondary to the E. coli 0157H7, as well as other conditions. TTP, on the other hand, we have inherited and acquired. Inherited is extremely rare. We have an absolute deficiency of the Adam TS13. However, in acquired, there is no deficiency. There is Adam TS13, but there is an inhibitor to the Adam TS13, usually IgG antibody. Let's compare between the typical HES and the thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. So this is typical. Okay, typical HES, the triad, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, acute renal failure. Thank you so much. Don't forget the E. coli and the blood in the stool. How about TTP? It's a pentad, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and renal failure. Plus fever and neurological symptoms, usually altered mental status. Don't forget there is no bloody diarrhea in TTP. Don't forget that renal failure is not very common. Now let's compare between atypical HES and TTP. Atypical, what's the problem? Complement problem. The serum Adam TS13 is fine. TTP, the defect is an Adam TS13, so its plasma activity is actually very low. Both of them are a freaking pentad microangiopathic hemolytic thrombocytopenia, renal failure, fever, and neurological symptoms. However, in atypical HES, renal failure is more common, neurological symptoms are less common. The opposite is true for TTP. Neurological symptoms are more common, but renal failure is less common. Here is everything you need to know about typical HUS, and we have talked about this before. Here is everything you need to master TTP. We have discussed this in previous videos. And here is the best classification of hemolytic uremic syndrome. We have two types. The first type has three names. They are synonyms. And the second type has three synonyms. Okay, what are the synonyms? It's called diarrhea negative. It's called atypical. It's called primary HUS. Thank you. This type is the diarrhea positive, it has blood in the stool. It's the secondary HUS, and it's also typical HUS. What is the etiology? Complement gene mutation or antibodies to complement factor H? What is the problem here? We call it secondary. So it's secondary to other diseases, such as the E. coli 0157H7, strip pneumo, and HIV. Secondary to lupus, which is an autoimmune disease, or secondary to immunosuppressant medications. How do we manage the atypical HUS? You can try eculizumab and immunosuppressants. How do we manage the diarrhea positive secondary HUS by treating the underlying freaking condition? But please don't forget that the E. coli 0157A7, this is self-limited. Do not give antibiotics. Do not give platelets unless it's life-threatening bleeding. Hemolytic uremic syndrome, this is the typical one. Microangiopathic hemolytic uremia, thrombocytopenia, acute renal failure, don't forget the bloody diarrhea, 0157H7. TTP is a freaking pentad. Microangiopathic hemolytic uremia, thrombocytopenia, acute renal failure, fever, altered mental status. TTP, we have the inherited and the acquired, and we have discussed this before. And here is the most important slide in the entire stinking video. Typical HES, atypical HES, TTP. 
What's the problem here? We have a triad. Here we have a pentad and TTP also a pentad. Remember, renal failure is more common in atypical, less common in TTP. Neurological symptoms, less common in atypical, more common in TTP. Etiology, shiga like toxin of the E. coli 0157H7. This is the entero hemorrhagic E. coli or EHEC. These are also the shiga toxin producing E. coli or STEC. The etiology of atypical complement gene mutation or antibodies to complement factor H. TTP, defect in the Adam TS13, could be a deficiency or an inhibitor. The typical patient in typical HUS is a child. In atypical, also a child, but in TTP, young adults usually in their 30s. All of them can have schistocytes. Lab results are very similar, so platelet count is low, bleeding time is high, MCV normal. Hematocrit is low, hemoglobin is low, RBCs are low, PT and PTT are fine, bilirubin high, LDH high, haptoglobin low, Coombs is negative, BO and created in high microscopic hematuria. Okay, these are the same. What's different and unique? Blood in the stool is unique for typical HUS. The EHEC 0157H7 is unique for typical HUS. How about atypical? NMTS 13 enzyme activity is actually very good. The problem here is in the complement. Okay. TTP, Adam TS13 enzyme activity is horrendous. How do we manage typical HES? It's a self-limited disease, so provide supportive care with fluids and electrolytes and the like. If there is symptomatic uremia, you can try dialysis. If there is anemia, you can give red blood cells, but please do not give platelets, do not give antibiotics. Atypical supportive care. If there is symptomatic uremia, go with dialysis, but these patients, because they have a genetic problem with the complement, they usually require renal transplant. Equalizumab is a huge drug. It became the gold standard for atypical HS. It's also the gold standard for freaking paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, or PNH, which we have discussed before in my hematology playlist. Plasma exchange can help. Why? Because we take this patient's plasma and give them new plasma that does not contain antibodies. Immunosuppressants can help. TTP is a freaking emergency. You go ahead and start plasma pharesis with plasma exchange using FFP or cryosupernatant. Do not give the cryoprecipitate because it contains the von Willebrand brand factors. Von Willebrand brand factor will lead to platelet microthrombi, adding insult to the injury and fuel to the fire. Again, do not give platelets, do not give antibiotics. The more important comparison for your exam, especially if you are still a student, is between typical HUS and TTP. Typical HUS, we have an acute diarrhea with injured endothelium and blood in the stool. Remember the triad of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and acute renal failure. TTP, however, the problem here is in Adam TS13, we have a pentad, five symptoms. We have microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, acute renal failure, although not very common, we have fever, beaver, and we have neurological symptoms. It's an emergency. Do not forget to do plasmapheresis shown here by the Plasma TV. And this was Picmonic, my favorite tool to memorize stuff that's unmemorizable. Here is the difference between typical HES and TTP if you haven't memorized it already. Repetition is the mother of pedagogy. Thank you for watching, you lovely people. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to Picmonic here, go to my website here. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.